Moving on to uh, one of the bowl games that probably doesn't get a lot of light shed on it, but every year we seem to have a great high-level G5 matchup. We have the Cure Bowl. Miami of Ohio takes on Appalachian State. The Mountaineers are now six-and-a-half point favorites, and this game carries an over-under of 44-and-a-half points. Kicks off at 3.30 p.m. Eastern on ABC. They play this one at FBC Mortgage Stadium, or the Bounce House as we still know it in Orlando, making it one of 13 FBS stadiums hosting bowls, that, of course, being UCF's home stadium. Uh, rain and wind are in the forecast here. It's still a little bit early. We're in the midweek, and this isn't until Saturday, of course, but keep an eye on that. Potentially 15-plus mile an hour sustained winds and a chance at rain. Miami, they are missing a couple of quarterbacks. There's a lot of teams, especially on today's slate that we're talking about, that are down to QB3, uh, Ohio being one, and, and Miami of Ohio now being another. Brett Gabbert out for the year with an injury. He is coming back next year for, like, I don't know, his 12th year of eligibility. I swear he's been in, in Oxford just forever. Uh, and, and then quarterback, the standing quarterback, Avion Smith, hit the portal. However... I like where Miami is right now. They may be missing these guys, but there is a ton of buy-in from this team for next season. I I saw this this big slew of announcements came out. All their best players are coming back next year, and they're going to play in this game. They had their kicker, I think, hit the portal for a minute and came back, but this team's going to be at full strength if you're not talking about just the quarterback, which is a concern, but I'm I'm not as concerned about the quarterback situation with Miami, as I am other teams, considering the Red Hawks run uh, on 64% of offensive plays in their last three games. That's the eighth most among non-service academies and more than Navy. So we're talking about a team that ground and pound really relies on their defense. So I think being down to an inexperienced quarterback is not the biggest issue in the world. So if you're looking at App State across the way, star running back Nate Noel hit the portal. I think that is uh, worth a point or half a point at least if you want to be a little more conservative. But that's really the only player of note that they're going to be missing. These two teams should be pretty close to uh, 100% sans a quarterback. Uh, the Mountaineers, they won their last five regular season games, including that shocker at James Madison. But their other wins, if you, if you look at it, uh, Southern Miss, Georgia State and Georgia Southern, who both combined to lose their last nine games, and uh, a sliding Marshall team. So I don't know that those that you know the James Madison win, awesome, five wins in a row, great, but it wasn't against the best competition. I just think it's great, Brett, that what we're fifteen minutes in and you've already talked about two kickers hitting the portal, one coming back out. It's just like. <laughs> It's, it's just crazy. We have 2,000 plus football players in the portal. Kickers, go get yours. What a season in Oxford. Uh, the Red Hawks won the MAC for just the second time since 2010, winning 2.8 more regular season games than I projected. That makes Miami the number 12 biggest overachiever this year, led by a top 20 defense nationally. This was the best Miami team since 2005, Brett, per my ratings. Um, just a really, really good Miami team. I mean, you're talking just, re- just after the Ben Roethlisberger era uh, the last time that Miami was this good. I had tempered expectations for App State this season. The Mountaineers exceeded those uh, by winning one more game than I projected and ultimately winning the East Division. But from a power rating perspective, this is the worst team in Boone since 2014, Brett. I talked. We talked about this during the season. I think, actually, I think it was going into the James Madison game. We talked about, hey, is James Madison the new App State? Is that who we think of when we think of a FCS to FBS team now making some noise at the G5 level? Of course, App State goes out and ruins James Madison's perfect season in that game. I still, though, as you look at how App State is trending as a program, I, I just I want them to be careful. Like they need to kind of get back on track because I do think we're pretty close to App State fading from the forefront of the G5 powers and being surpassed by some teams in their own conference like James Madison. So I think it sounds silly, but I think this is an important game for App State to 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 finish the year on a high note and see if they can kind of build some momentum into what I think is a pretty important year in 2024 for App State as they try to stay at the forefront of the G5 ranks in a Sun Belt conference that could be, maybe it already is, the best G5 conference uh, moving forward. We'll see. There's some really, really strong teams. I want to see the bottom get better first. But there's some really, really strong teams at the top and in the middle of that conference. Kelly, when it comes to bowl games, I we talked about it. I usually handicap away from power ratings. But I think you can use power ratings in this game. I would adjust Nate Noel for a point myself. Uh, y- you may want to just take a half a pointer whatever your tolerance level is on risk. Uh, and then you look at the Miami quarterback situation, maybe one and a half or two points. I really don't think it's all that much. So if, if I'm taking all this into account, uh, I, I think I like Miami with the points. I would love to see it hit seven. Um, I liked it at six. I went back to go bet it, saw it move to six and a half. So I'm 
currently waiting. If it hits seven, uh, this is all Miami for me, especially in a low total game like this. Uh, the team is built on defense, which is completely intact here. And then uh, I think that maybe th- we're taking an advantage of uh, too big a bump on their quarterbacks. I just don't. Th- I've harped on it this whole this whole segment. I just don't think it matters all that much the way that they play. But uh, App State. They are actually a great confidence pool pick because they're less than 40% at time of recording with a 67% expected win rate. So if you're looking to uh, make maybe some money, if you want to take the, the Red Hawks side, you can bet them. But if you don't think that they're going to win outright or you want to mitigate some of your risk, then pick App State in your confidence pool um, moving forward.